just the one case tonight? Yes, sir. All right. That moves on to the city of Valdosta. Our first case is CU 2024 would you like to present that for us, Matt? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is a conditional use permit request by Roche Kempson for a family-sized personal care home in single-family R6 zoning. Um, subject property, as you can see on the zoning map screen, is part of the neighborhood, completely surrounded by R6 zoning, um, single-family residences. Character area for the surrounding neighborhood is established residential. Area imagery, you see the rooftop of the houses, some of the urban forests. Uh, the development that is there. A uh, very simple existing site sketch the applicant is proposing. Uh, no changes to the exterior. It is currently a three-person personal care home that has been operating um, since a year ago. Um, no issues or complaints that we are aware of. The applicant is proposing to expand the capacity of the facility from three to five. As you know, personal care homes are used by right in the city's residential zoning districts up till three people through three and we add number four or five or six it triggers a conditional use public hearing and in this case they're re uh, requesting to expand from three to five um, some photographs such as property small single family residence um, it is larger than it looks this is it's not very wide but it has a very large rear addition um, that you see a little bit more prominently here um, this is actually traced off with an aerial image so the addition is about the same size as the original part of the house. Um, a view of the side yard to the east, um, single family driveway has room for about two cars on the site. Adjacent properties, this is looking clockwise around to the right. This is the house to the east. The view down the street, the little view of the houses across the street. And then westward back up West Magnolia, again, single family residential neighborhood. And then the single family homes immediately to the west. Um, we've not reviewed a personal care home in a little while, but traditionally we don't get much above four unless it's a particularly large residence. In this case, I think in your packet, I don't have it in the slideshow, but there is a floor plan um, that articulates the different rooms. Also in your packet are some emails, one from the building official, one from the fire marshal, and they're expressing concerns about the number of rooms, particularly the number of bedrooms. Um, with that floor plan, you see it's three bedrooms, one of the bedrooms being large, the other two that are small. There's what looks like it may have been a third bedroom in yesteryear that is small that has no extra access to the outside. It has only an interior doorway, which means it is ineligible to be a bedroom for a facility of this kind. There's also some questions raised that you see in the email about the lack of a fire sprinkler system, um, which those requirements change periodically. Um, the way I understand it is even at the, today's size of being three persons, it is non-compliant. It should have three um, or have a fire sprinkler system in its current size. A new facility would be required to do it regardless. Um, fire marshal is willing to grandfather this one in but believes that an expansion should trigger the fire sprinkler system. Um, under the old rules, I think before a year ago, that would not have triggered until you hit person number five, so four would have been okay. But I think that will be an ongoing discussion with the fire marshal. Um, so with all of that, um, staff is finding the request to be consistent with a comprehensive plan, the conditional use review criteria, but with the following conditions. There are four of these. First one, approval shall be granted for a personal care home with up to four residents that continues to meet all state and local licensing requirements. Number two, all parking for the facility shall be on fully paved surfaces as approved by the city engineer. Three, install a fire sprinkler system and alarm monitoring system as approved by both the fire marshal and the building official. And number four, conditional use approval shall expire after two years from the date of approval if no amended business license or the increased size of the facility has been approved by that date. Just to emphasize, this is an already existing personal care home with three residents and been operating for a year. Um, the applicant is here. If you have questions for her, she would like to speak. And otherwise, I'll be glad to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you. Just real quick, Matt. So, I know we've done a 
over the years, several uh, at least personal care homes, I believe. So, what is all of a sudden triggering this sprinkler application? I don't know what's behind it, but I know the code requirements keep changing. I think the latest changes were in January. At least that's what the fire marshal told me. Um, that it applies to all personal care homes now, regardless of size. So the ones that we've approved in the last 15 years with grandfather, they don't have to have it, but going forward? And right. what would, uh, I think that's how it's being administered. I don't think it's retroactive um, unless something triggers it. Maybe permitting might. I, I do not know the exact wording of whatever this last amendment was. But I think what's happening, like we see in so many of our other code requirements, is as bad things happen every once in a while, and insurance companies and attorneys get involved, that right. they're really worried about safety of people in facilities such as this. So um, I think this one might be further complicated, because I think it's a personal care home for disabled individuals, but it makes it a little bit harder or at least take a little more time for people to get out of the facility if there's a fire. And I know the state, through their licensing requirements, really get into the weeds and the details of how that is executed. So, so, the, I'm just, so is it the addition of the force residence that's triggering this? It's the addition of any residence, I think, is triggering for compliance with the current rules for personal care homes. And so the expansion... Yeah. It's an amended license, yes. and so it triggers more. Um, I'm not sure how much discretion the fire marshal truly has in this. This is kind of a new change. I know from talking to him, his mindset for the past few years, five triggers, four is okay. But apparently four is no longer okay. So, and I've had conversations with the fire marshal. I think the applicant has as well. But it's you know, right in the, the cusp of things. It's grandfathered in from not too long ago. So there may be some ways to work with it. I, I don't this, know. This is on city water, so? This is in the heart of the city, city utility system. It's really, it's a question of the occupancy and the type of residence. So I have to, if, if denied, did that put sprinklers in it as it is? That would be a good question. I would think not. Thank um, you. Some are more economical than others. We've been trying to get some cost estimates, and it's been hard to find people. I did give some information to a local company, to the applicant, to see if they can get an estimate. Um, and I took that from our plan review system where we had another existing personal care home, albeit a little bit larger than this one, but they were retroactively going in with the fire spectrum system. And I don't know if there was something changed in their licensing, maybe something that their insurance carrier was mandating because of the change of codes. I don't know what triggered that one. But that was a facility on Northside Drive. And it was 2,100 square feet. Um, the permit value, if I remember right, was 7,900 for the construction value. That doesn't necessarily mean the actual cost. But for permit the calculation purposes, that was the number that was given. So the applicant had asked for up to five residents, and you're giving her one more. Right. Based on four plan and concerns from building official and the fire marshal. Basically the layout of the building. The way it's configured is you would have one in each of the two bedrooms in the main part of the house. Mm -hmm. And if you go to five, then you've got to have three people in that room in the back. And quite honestly, I don't know if the state approves three in one bedroom. But that's beyond what I get into. Now, um, with the, I'm sorry. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, just to, to understand, uh, based on, I guess, some of the conversation, I understand that we're primarily just kind of focused on, on this conditional use. Um, who at the end of the day, um, outside of the fire marshal, I guess, would be able to to say yay or nay to this? As you kind of mentioned, um, if the resident was able to, um, if the owner, I'm sorry, or the applicant at this time was able to add an additional uh, bed to this extra space, 
or if a third bed was permitted in there, mm -hmm. you know, depending on, you know, with our limited influence and our limited right. kind of... There are several different sets of requirements <coughs> and approvals that can be played together, and they have to pass all of them. Um, so you have a fire marshal and a building official, which are local, that review for fire codes, life safety codes. The state, through its licensing process, also relies on the local fire marshal to be their eyes and ears and do the inspections. But it's pursuant to state rules for these facilities, which really get into the details of the floor plan and the sizes of the room, um, number of bathrooms is another issue, and so on. Um, so they will have their limit. Um, the other one is this public hearing process, which goes to city council, and they can set an ultimate limit. So a couple different scenarios. Even if the city were to approve up to the maximum that's eligible here, which would be six, based on zoning code, um, the licensing review of the state, in tandem with the review of the fire marshal and building official, could trim that back to a lower number because of the facility, okay? or vice versa. It may be uh, licensable for a larger number, but the conditional use might put a limit. And one of the criteria that we use for personal care homes is this is a pseudo-residential use. It's sort of residential and institutional wrapped into one. The general intent is based on size, that if this facility operates like a household size, the theory is it would fit within a neighborhood of households. Um, the good news, it's been there a year as a small size. No one knows it's even been there. That's a positive track record, so that helps. Um, but once you get beyond some certain size, then it might be considered more institutional than residential. Um, and like I said, the, over the 30 years of doing this, generally four is fine if, the, it's, if there's no other issues. Only times the city council has gone beyond that is when it's a particularly large house or large lot. In other words, lots of room. Like a five bedroom house that's 3,000 square feet, that kind of thing. Which this is not. Okay. Further questions for staff? All right. <clears throat> is there anyone that would like to speak in favor of this case? Would. Could you come forward so I can just ask a couple questions? <clears throat> First off, let me say I appreciate everything you're doing because I kind of work in this space, so I understand the um, dedication and the hard work to run in a personal care home. So I appreciate you for that. Um, and I know that your request was for a, an additional two residents to hook you up at five, and he's conditioning you to four. Are you okay with that? Yes, ma'am. Okay, because um, I also know that there is lack of space for residents. Um, so, what is the state regulations for the number of residents you can put into a bedroom? Um, as long as they have eight feet, square feet between, uh -huh. you're going to be a fool. Okay. But it's every resident at that big feet. So you would conceivably have room for a fifth resident in that last room? Yes, okay. Um, I don't know. Where are the three residents, uh, the resident clients, your clients sleeping at? Are they all in separate, in the three different bedrooms? Um, I have two, two of them, and they are in a separate room. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if I would, uh, uh, the gender? Female. All females? Mm -hmm. And they're all disabled? Well, they have, I don't say they mm -hmm. disabled. They have issues. Of challenges. Yes. Okay. So it could be physical or mental challenges. Right. Okay. So I know at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's all about making a dollar. Okay. So, huh? For all of us. For all of us, it is. I, I don't mean that's just here. So, if the reduction of four in your upfront cost to having to pay for a sprinkler system, 
Can I pick your brain and see what your thoughts are? Ooh. Well, I got an estimate for it. And I don't know, I'm still thinking about that on spiritual oh, sense. Okay. Yes, it is. Just an egg. You want an extra person. Ms. Rocher, in, out of curiosity, kind of in tandem to that, and looking at the um, the particular layout that you have here from the, the plan, mm -hmm. what was your idea? We, you know, we kind of talked in the work session a little bit about you know, where people could fit. And so understanding that there's um, 80 square foot per person, mm -hmm. was your uh, basic understanding at this point in time, because I'm not sure if one of these, uh, well, was your basic intent at this point in time to put a third per three beds in that one? In that yeah. Okay. Just it was just out of, out of curiosity okay. trying to understand how everybody would be positioned. So, okay. so I guess my my question is the third recommendation to install a fire sprinkler system. That is our recommendation or is the fire marshal telling them that that has to be done? That's from the fire marshal. Okay. And you've got his emails in here and the building official. They're both so whether notice we that there's been a change in the code from a year okay. ago. So whether we, sh whether we approve for four or five residents, regardless, there has to be an upgrade. In the there needs to be an upgrade. I did get informal comment from the fire marshal who understands that this is a grandfathered situation. Mm -hmm. He thinks there might be some alternatives with only four people. Okay. Um, it goes down to the exits and how safe the building is. Or maybe sprinkling part of the building, but not the whole thing. In other words, he's trying to think of some real way within the code to help the situation. And these are state mandated fire codes. International fire. Definitely statewide. Well, I'm just trying to think of some way she has to do it to make it where it's profitable for her, you know, in the end. And at, at this time, you're basing it based on your current occupancy, which is two residents, and you're kind of trying to project forward for the additional residents. Is that? Mm -hmm. To double the number. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> She's licensed locally and at the state level to have three. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I thought the current ones were disabled adults, or not necessarily everybody. Okay. I was just going by letter of intent, what's in your packet. Is there anyone else who would like to speak in favor of this case? Is there anyone that would like to speak in opposition to this case? No one in opposition. Further questions for staff? There being none, we'll entertain a motion on this case. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner. Uh, regarding this case, CU 2024-04, uh, and based on the discussion, um, I would like to make a motion that we recommend approval, including the conditions as set forth by staff and um, agreed upon by the applicant. Is there a second? A second. Commissioner Miller, second. Just, just for, just for discussion here. I mean, we have first thing I'm doing that. So that, that's your motion is on just on the four, the four oh, occupants. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yes, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I said it now. I apologize. I'm good. That's, that's what we clarified it. Yeah. I read that. I know better. <laughs> All in favor? Yes. 